Hi everybody, welcome to your everyday math lesson for 5.3. So I am working in the everyday math workbook. We're going to be working on this lesson today and we're going to talk today about how to add um, mixed numbers and improper fractions. Um, one of the things that we're going to use first is we're going to talk about how estimates can help us. This is very, very important because if you're making an estimate and then your answer is nowhere near your estimate, that means you probably made a mistake. So this is a good way to practice that. So we're going to start by looking at this first problem. Making those estimates is going to be important for you. So this is on page 160 in your second Everyday Math Journal workbook for students. Um, we're going to start with two-fifths plus one-fourths. So I'm going to think about two-fifths. And for me, I like to draw pictures. I'm a picture person. So to help me figure this out, I'm going to actually draw my picture just below it. So I'm going to draw my fifths. Okay, two fifths plus one fourths. Okay, so if I add those together, is that going to be about half, about one, or about one and a half? I'm going to guess that that's actually going to be about half. That's my guess. All right. One ninth flow is four ninths plus three ninths. Well, this one's easy because all the denominators are the same. So that's going to be super easy. Let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight ninths. And I know my answer already, so I'm going to put it. Is that about half, about one, or about one and a half? I would say that's about one, almost one. That's what we're going to do. And notice it says, answer any problem you can solve mentally. This one, I'm going to have to change. So I'm not going to worry about that answer right now. Okay? If you want to answer it later, fine. But we don't have to right this second. We're going to skip that for right now. Let's do the next one. Three-fourths plus one-eighths. I'm sorry, five-eighths. Again, I'm going to draw my picture. Three-fourths. Plus five eighths. Okay. So what's your answer to the answer? Hmm, is that going to be a little less than one? Mm -hmm. More than one or more than two? Well, when I add them together, it's not going to be more than two. But it is more than one. Now, for me, I can do this one mentally because I know four goes into eight easily. So I know that what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by two over two. So six eighths plus five eighths equals 11 eighths. And if I actually um, rename that, it means one and three eighths. That's how I would do that question. All right, two and four fifths plus one and two thirds. All right, again, I'm gonna use my whole numbers. Let's see, two plus one is three. Okay, so I know it's gonna be bigger than three. Four fifths. Oh, that's almost a whole. Plus two thirds. Oh, that's definitely adding at least a whole plus another half. So three, four. It's going to be more than four. So I know that's not right. It's definitely more than three. It's going to be between four and five. Do I have to solve it? Nope. Let's try this next one on your own. This one you can solve. What I want you to do is I want you to think about it first. Let's do our estimate first. So 5 plus 2 and then 1 16th plus 1 16th. Where would that end up? Would they, that be a little less than 7, more than 7, or almost 8? Where would that one end up? What do you think? So for this question, I know that 2 plus 5 is 7. 1 16th and 1 16th, those are little itty bitty tiny pieces. So it's going to be more than 7, but it's nowhere near 8. So I'm going to say it's a little more than 7. That's where my estimate would be. And now I can actually do the work that goes with it. 1 16th plus 1 16th is 2 16th. That's how you do that question. All right, I want you to now make the estimate for number six. So two and seven eighths plus one and three eighths. 
what would your estimate for this question be? Is it going to be a little more than three, a little less than four, or a little more than four? For this question, my answer, okay, I know that two seven-eighths is really close to a whole. So I'm going to say that's close to three. Plus one. And even more. So three plus one is four, plus a little bit more. It's going to be bigger than four. Just a little bit bigger. Now let's do the math. Let's actually add. So start adding your whole number, then add your fraction, and let's see what you get. What is your final answer? What is two and seven eighths plus one and three eighths? All right, for this question, two plus one is three. Seven eighths plus three eighths is ten eighths. It's three and ten eighths, but I don't like that. I think it's ugly. I don't like it at all. I'm going to rename it ten eighths. Let's see. Ten eighths is the same as one with two left over. So that would make it four and two eighths. Four and two eighths. That's how we would do that question. All right, we're going to do a few more using an estimate and then solving and showing our work. So this is on page 161. We're going to do some addition um, and mixed numbers. We're going to do this page together. And then the next page you're going to do um, as a little bit of a check for understanding. I want to see if you can do those on your own. Okay. So here we go. So number one, it says estimate and then solve to show and show your work. So we're going to start with our estimate. Three and four sevenths. Think about four sevenths. I'm going to say that's about three and a half. Because half a seven is about three and a half. It's close. Plus four and four sevenths. So plus four and a half. It's my estimate, right? Does your estimate have to match mine? No, it doesn't have to match exactly. But as long as you know what you're doing with it, you're fine. So three and a half plus four and a half, let's see. Half plus half is a whole. Plus 4 is 5, plus 3 is 8. So my estimate, yeah, this one's going to be about 8. Okay? All right, let's see what we get. 3 plus 4 is 7. 4 sevenths plus 4 mm -hmm. sevenths is 8 sevenths. All right, 7 and 8 sevenths is the same as 8 and 1 seventh. Is my estimate correct? Yep. Let's try this next one. 6 and 3 fourths plus 1 sixth. Okay. So 6 and 3 fourths, I'm going to say that's so really close to, two times two. maybe I'm going to say that's close to 7. Yeah. I like to keep it easy, right? 1 sixth, it's really close to 0. So 7 plus 0, my answer is going to be about 7. I want you to see if you can solve this problem. Remember, you know how to find a common denominator. See if you can find the common denominator, show your work, and solve this problem. What is your final answer? All right, here we go. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do my T chart. That's the easiest way for me. So 4 and 6. 4 times 1. 4 times 2. 4 times 3. 6 times 1. 6 times 2. I already see a common denominator. So that's what I'm going to use. 4 times 3 equals 12. So I'm going to take Careful. this times 3. Whatever I do to the bottom, I also do to the top. So 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. 6 times 2 equals 12. Whatever I do to the bottom, i got to do to the top. 2 times 1 is 2. 6 times 2 is 12. Then I can add those together. Let's see. I have my whole number. 6 plus nothing is 6. 9, 10, 11. Your answer should have been 6 and 11 twelfths, which is really close to 7. All right, number 3, estimate 7 eighths plus 1 sixths. What would you use for your estimate? All right, for my estimate for this question, what I would do is I would say 7 eighths is really close to 1. 1 sixth, again, I think that's closer to 0 than anything, so 1 plus 0 equals the one. Now, if you want to say one plus a third or something like that, that's okay. As 
long as you're close, yeah. right? Now I'm going to do my adding. Before I can add, I have to find a common denominator. 6 and 8. This is where knowing those multiplication facts will come in. 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3, 6 times 4. And I'm going to stop there. 8 times 1, 8 times 2, and 8 times 3. Do you see why I stopped? because I know my multiplication facts and I know that they both go into 24. All right, that's gonna be my common denominator. Change my eight first. I did eight times three. Whatever I do to the bottom, you gotta do to the top. All right, seven times three is 21 over 24. Six times one, two, three, four. Six times four. Whatever I do to the bottom, you do to the top. 4 times 1 is 4, 6 times 4 is 24. All right, add them together, 21, 24 plus 4, 24. What is my final answer? All right, for this answer, you would actually add those together. So 21 plus, 20 plus 4 is 25 over 24, absolutely. But I don't like that. It's not pretty. 25 over 24, I'm going to rename that fraction. The way that you do that is you do 25 divided by 24, which is 1, so with 1 left over. That, that is my final answer. All right, let's try number 4. Do your estimate. 7 and 2 thirds plus 2 and 3 fifths. What is your estimate? For this question, I'm going to make it a little simple for me. 7 and 2 thirds, I'm going to say is close to 7 and a half. 3, I'm sorry, 2 and 3 fifths. I'm going to say it's close to 2 and a half. And I'm going to add those. 7 plus 2 is 9. Plus 1 half. Plus 1 half is 10. My answer is going to be really close to 10. Alright, now let's find our common denominator. Finding my common denominator, I have a 3 and a 5. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. 5, 10, 15. That's my denominator. Alright, renaming this fraction, I want you to go ahead and rename the fraction with the common denominator, add them together, and find your final answer. Remember, to reduce or rename if you need to. Okay? What is your final answer? Okay. All right, for this question, your common denominator is 15. So 3 times 5. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So 5 times 2 is 10. There we go. And remember, I do not change my, my whole number. When you're renaming your fraction, you do not change the whole number. You're just doing the fraction part of it. Okay, so I'm just looking at the fraction section right now. 5 times 3 equals 15. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So 9 over 15. All right, here we go. What's 10 fifteenths plus 9 fifteenths? 19 fifteenths. But I'm going to rename that because I don't like that. So it's the same as 1 and 4 fifteenths. Right? Then I add my whole numbers. 7 plus 2 is 10. So 10 plus 1 is, I'm sorry, is 9. Plus 1 is 10 and 4 fifteenths. Let me say that again because that was a little tricky and confusing. I did 7 plus 2, which is 9. And then I added my 1 and 4 fifteenths. That's how I got 10 and 4 fifteenths. You also could technically have said 9 and 19 over 15, but I wanted you to make sure you renamed it. So make sure that you follow all steps and keep going. If this part is confusing, make sure that you're on my Zooms because we're reviewing that every day. We're going to review it all week. So make sure you're on the Zooms to go over those, okay? Number five. Here we go. It says for each number story, write a number model for, with an unknown 
Make an estimate and then solve your story. Show your work, record your answer in the summary model that you used to estimate to check whether your answer makes sense. Here we go. It says, Mr. Kumar's class ate six and three-fourths pizza. Miss Reinhardt's class ate four and two-fourths pizza. How many pizzas did the two classes eat? So the first thing that you need to do is put in your number model. Your number model, remember, has a letter for the unknown. So it's blank plus blank equals R, right? So six and three-fourths plus four and two-fourths equals P for pizza. Okay, now let's make an estimate. Six and three-fourths, okay, I'm going to say that's close to six and a half. Plus four and two-fourths, which is four and a half. So six and a half plus four and a half, mm, 10, 11, it's going to be about 11. You also could say maybe a little bit more than 11. Okay, I'll take either of those, okay. right? Now we need to do our pizza. Here we go. Six and three-fourths, four and two-fourths, and I always rewrite my number this way. The other strategy that I use is, again, I go fractions, and then I use my whole numbers. So three-fourths plus two-fourths is five-fourths. Six plus four is ten. And then I add those together. It's an easy little trick way to do this. Six, I'm sorry, ten plus five-fourths. Well, five-fourths is the same as one and one-fourth. So ten plus one and one-fourth is eleven and one-fourth. Six and three-fourths plus four and two-fourths equals eleven and one-fourth. Okay, another thing you can do. Are you ready? Uh, draw your pizzas. Three, four, five, six. And three fourths. Plus one, two, three, four, and two fourths. Hmm. Eleven and one fourths. Check my work. My answer is the same. Is my estimate really close? Yeah. So am I probably right? Absolutely. The next couple questions are very similar to this. So you are going to use number models. You are going to solve addition and uh, subtract. I'm sorry, addition problems with fractions and mixed numbers. Notice at the very top it says addition. So I'm not going to subtract. I'm not going to multiply. I'm going to add. That's what we're practicing today. All right. So I hope that this works for you. Please, please try these problems. If you have any questions, reach out and I will talk to you and see you on the Zoom. Have a great day, guys.